You are a someone. You could also be a someone else if you wanted to start behaving like that person or if you stopped behaving like you normally do. Then you might think, well, I could behave like anyone. And that's true. So who you are isn't merely what you do because you could do anything right now. So then who are you? Well, you're no one and everyone simultaneously. Again, in order to break free from this endless mind trap, start exploring the parts of you that aren't necessarily your best features. That's my dogs. I'm sorry. So the best features, okay? The, the room... Have a listen to those dogs. The room might love only the chair in the space. It might hate all of the shitty old furniture. But like us, when we start to expand our consciousness, we need to start looking at our pain and fear and shame and trauma. So the, the room needs to start looking <laughs> the dogs are going crazy the room needs to start looking at all the shitty pieces of furniture to figure out what the fuck it is right okay so breaking free from this endless mind trap involves having a look at the parts of you that aren't necessarily your best features so as human beings rather than staying present with our feelings we remove or distract ourselves from them thereby attaching ourselves to cycles of pleasure and pain so that's like the room having to be the chair and it goes through all of these things just so it can be the chair. It constantly makes it look better and better, invest more time and it's, you know, it sacrifices a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't need to, okay? Uh, so these are all avoidance behaviors, subsequent come downs and further strategies to feel good. But we do not need to lose ourselves in karmic cycles so long as we remain present with whatever we are feeling. So how good are you at literally sitting with disgust when you see something disgusting or you feel disgusting? Can you remain open and sit with that? Can you remain open and sit with your fear without doing something which creates the karma wheel to kick on and roll? Can you just sit and be with the fear? This is what I'm talking about here. This is expanding your consciousness. Okay. So to stop being a someone or at least to start recognizing the true nature of yourself, begin by doing something different then your consciousness will grow because it isn't only headed towards the clouds, but down to the mud and further below. And as David Data says, who is a spiritual teacher and an author of over 10 books that I love, he says, a life lived well embraces death by feeling open from heart to all in every moment, in every moment. Wide open, you can offer without holding back. You can receive without pushing away. Wide open, heart to all, you are openness, unseparate from this entire open moment. Every part of the moment comes and goes as openness. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. So, oh, it's getting darker in here. Guys, if you're watching at home, sorry about the fuzziness. I need to get myself some better, some better lighting. The ego is a combination of thoughts, which are basically just what we think is socially desirable expectations. Uh, that's the Freudian superego. Um, combination of that and everything that we see outside of ourselves that keeps us being who we are. So if I'm a writer and I see writing things all around and that reinforces my identity because I keep behaving like that, well then my ego is attached to some idea of writing. Okay. And I suppose the whole the big the most important thing to remember, guys, with this is that what all the spiritual teachers talk about is what is, if you're not the ego and you're merely watching yourself do heaps of egos in this lifetime, then what is the you that watches yourself? And now that's a thought. So the paradox becomes then, well, what is the you watching the you watch yourself? So it's this endless thing, but eventually it just becomes down to what people in the East call the oneness or, you know, uh, God or, or, or all these things. But we live in this endless idea of paradoxes and it's, I suppose the whole idea around thinking about, you know, thinking about thinking, ego abstraction is a lovely humbling sense of freedom in the idea that you don't need to be who you are if you don't like who you are. If you are suffering, if you have high anxiety, okay, this is something that I tell my clients, if you are struggling with all these things, what you should look at, use that room analogy, okay? If you have high anxiety, like the room, 
who has identified itself with the raging homicidal murderer that stands in the room, you can choose not to be that murderer person anymore, okay? Now, bear with me with the analogy. You can face some other thing over here and go, okay, there's a murderer over there, okay? So there is fear within us. Fear is a part of what it means to be human. But then there's also happiness over here, okay? We don't want to neglect either fear nor happiness. We want to resonate in the idea that all of those things and remaining open to that comprise the necessary experience of what it means to be perfectly imperfect.